welcome everybody. I, I hope you can see this slide. Um, as this and, and uh, well, um, Jackie, so if, if you're around, uh, unless you, you went for coffee or something like that, uh, please jump in where, wherever necessary. Huh? So as this is supposed to be a workshop, we're trying to do uh, uh, things a little bit different. Um, we're using uh, another tool uh, to work with, uh, which we have been using for some other workshops in the past. Um, so the agenda for, um, for this uh, workshop will be a short introduction, about 15 minutes. This is just a rough schedule um, to talk about what we are aiming at, what we would like to do and uh, to uh, give you some time to familiarize yourself with the tool we are going to use. Um, the next step then would be to, to talk about um, some ideas about uh, robots. Um, so uh, this whole process has been going on for quite some time and there have been a lot of people involved with a lot of ideas, uh, with a lot of visions of uh, different uh, kind of robots supposed to be used by different groups of participants. And we will show some examples and then um, about the ideas, we would like to finally collect some, some of your ideas, what kind of robots you envision for, um, for this uh, open competition um, or what kind of robots could be um, used for that, because that may be one of the critical issues uh, to come up with uh, some common framework. Um, finally, we would like to talk about the rules. Uh, um, do a little bit of a uh, presentation about the evolution of the rules, how this happened in the past. Again, there are two major tracks of rule evolution, um, mainly the track related to the uh, humanoid league, to what we've been discussing a couple of years actually by now. And of course, there also has been um, some discussion in the uh, Robocop Junior domain uh, and they also have been uh, working on different kinds of rule sets. And apparently, if this is our idea to, to uh, combine the two tracks, uh, then uh, of course we will also have to kind of join the two tracks of rule evolution. And eventually we would like to go for uh, some conclusion. And now, um, as with the, the two points ideas, we would like to uh, collect your view. Uh, we would like to uh, use uh, a collaboration tool, which is a Myra board. So all of you should be able to um, um, enter the system. Uh, we have um, a screenshot of uh, the system to the right. This is uh, our, uh, our board for today's uh, workshop. And um, so I would like you to, uh, to follow this link. There's an underscore here, um, so it, it may not be visible because of the overall underline. Um, there's an uh, underscore between the J and the K. I so just, just posted it into the group chat and Heinrich posted it into Discord. Good, That's, uh, that would, would have been one of the other steps for me to do. So please um, um, go there. Um, you may only see a small portion, small part of the um, uh, of the board, and uh, we are, we will start at the top left, and you will kind of identify three domains. So this is um, uh, the top left domain um, to familiarize ourselves with the with the system, some introduction, and then we have uh, one domain to deal with the. Um, with the robot design and one with the rule evolution. So um, maybe instead of um, me moving over to the MyRobot 2, I will um, kind of um, change my view in this system to, to the board so we can have um, the recording. So it would be easier for, for others to follow. Oops. That would be nice um, as well for the YouTube recording, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm not sure if things will run as smoothly as uh, they typically do, uh, but um, so everybody else, please move over and um, I will try to 
move over to the to the Meyer board here. Yeah, so um, if I could say a couple of things, we have yep. already uh, 12 people, uh, 3 plus 10, 13 people now on the Miro board. So uh, please join the board. Um, you don't need to uh, register or sign in with Google, I believe, to view the board. But if you want to make um, additions to our to the board or you want to have uh, little notepads, uh, sticky notes that you can put on the boards, then I believe you have to actually log in uh, for that or create an account. Um, we hope that this is a very interactive uh, communal endeavor rather than a presentation. Uh, so we require uh, input from you, uh, your ideas, your feedback. Uh, as Reinhard has mentioned, the open humanoid open competition originally uh, was an idea to have a competition that had simpler rules, simpler constraints on the robot, um, so that other teams that are not so interested in Robocup but are still doing research in humanoid robotics have a chance to enter. RoboCup. And uh, then last year we got together, uh, we were, became aware of uh, initiative by RoboCup Junior, people who were interested in generating a humanoid league uh, for RoboCup Junior. And uh, then the or shall we say the flavor of the competition changed slightly uh, so that it now is also seen as a bridging uh, league for teams from RoboCup Junior to give them an easier time into entering the major leagues. And I think that's a very exciting opportunity. Um, and hopefully we can develop this further. However, the competition is not a junior competition. Uh, we also plan to have teams uh, from undergraduate students and other researchers. Um, and then we need to discuss exactly how the scoring should take place and things like that. But um, that's a general idea. So uh, now I think the number of people on the board have sort of saturated or uh, um, dampened uh, to about 16. So, um, Reinhardt, do you want to start with the board? Uh, maybe um, you give a little introduction to the Miro. Yeah, actually, or, I'm st kind of still fighting with it. But um, yes, we could start. So at the top left, there's this start here field and um, you can zoom in and out of the board and you can pan the board. Um, so we started with some uh, practice field. Um, Reinhard, quick question. Do you want to share your screen? Otherwise, I would yeah, try yeah, to... Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just working on this. Okay. Um, I, I just need to pick the, um, the proper... Uh, well, I ha probably I have to move this to, to a, um, a different... Um, tap or to a different window to be able to share this. Um, okay, but maybe for, for everybody else, um, you start at the top left and um, you should uh, be able to pick some of the, the sticky notes. Huh? So you know sticky notes from the um, from our regular um, analog um, kind of uh, workshops. And uh, yeah, here we are, just found it. So you should be able to see my screen now in, um, in the Zoom meeting too. Um, so you know the kind of, uh, of um, sticky notes and you can um, 
kind of pick up these sticky notes, move them. Um, you could uh, write your your name or, or whatever kind of information you would like to have on those. And, and of course, you could um, uh, change the position. And this is uh, just just a little game, uh, kind of uh, familiarize yourself with this. Um, um, so if you have a, uh, a major background, a junior background, um, uh, if you're familiar with with Miro, and we will make use of this uh, sticky notes as uh, one of the main uh, things um, to uh, to document our ideas. Um, eventually, we will um, do a kind of screenshot. Uh, we will do an export of this. Um, uh, this board uh, to document the um, the idea um, of uh, the ideas we we kind of collected. Of course, there are other ways of um, of um, interacting. You can do some drawing. Uh, you can uh, add some text fields and so on. Um, there's one thing to be careful about. Every user now in this workshop has the full um, editing, almost the full editing rights. So you can uh, kind of destroy everything. Um, um, so please be careful. Well, I, I have some, some uh, backup of this. Um, so maybe that's uh, the kind of starting point. Um, looks like uh, everybody is, is happy with that. And uh, we could then uh, kind of uh, move on uh, to the to the introduction to the background. Uh, Jackie just uh, mentioned some of this, um, and uh, well, if you just follow the uh, the arrow, you will come up at some um, field uh, with the number A one, and this actually is what. Um, uh, what we had as a vision for this workshop. So maybe, uh, Jackie, you want to, to add some, some more to, to that? Yeah, uh, I, can, I can talk about this. So uh, the goal of uh, the Humanoid Open Soccer competition, um, open soccer referring to the fact that there's less constraints, less rules to be aware of, um, is to have a competition for young researchers and um, interested in humanoid soccer robots. So those could include uh, RoboCup Junior people that are uh, nearing the end of their tenure in their RoboCup Junior teams. It could be uh, even younger junior uh, people that uh, want more of a challenge maybe undergraduate students that are just getting started in robotics or other researchers that are not willing to commit to a full RoboCup team at the moment. Uh, if you want to play in the kid size league, for example, you need four robots, they need to listen to the game controller, they need to be able to stand up and uh, things like that. So there's a lot of constraints. And uh, one of the ideas is um, that by reducing the number, the, the, the amount of resources, uh, the manpower that is needed, um, then we can also attract more new teams that will then maybe join the uh, kid size competition in the future. Uh, so we wanted to have a single robot uh, that competes in an event, a simplified rule set, and also be more open and flexible and versatile uh, so that we can explore the design space of robot systems more, uh, allowing more experimentation. And so one of the things that I think that LEAK uh, could do is that certainly for uh, teams that are taking part in it, in RoboCup Humanoid LEAK or RoboCup Junior, um, for them to sort of focus on the fun part of uh, soccer. Like um, actually, of course, when you play soccer, then the most exciting thing is to score a goal. And similarly, if you design a robot system to play soccer, then 
Uh, if your robot can score a goal, then that's really exciting. Uh, if you need to spend two months implementing the state machine that listens to the uh, referee box, and you need to work on automatic positioning and uh, stand-up motions, then those are interesting research challenges, but they're sort of not central to playing soccer, I feel. So um, if we move to A2. Um, uh, may, may I inter intervene? Because I have some yep. question I have about this uh, slide. So th there's two points which uh, seems particularly important to me is First is the fact that it's presented as an entry competition. So this would mean that, like, I humanoid probably entry there. Yeah, the entry here. There could be no entry, yeah. Yeah, so for me, this would mean that it would not be like another competition, but it would be like for a transition. So that, that's one thing which could be uh, a little bit tricky. Uh, and then there's something which is um, a little bit difficult as well is the first paragraph says it's for young researchers and then we are talking uh, in the three bullet points about researchers that are at the moment unwilling to commit to a full Robocop team. So that's not necessarily young researcher if we take this point of view. And, well, it would uh, be young with respect to Robocop in the sense that they don't have a lot of experience okay. with Robocop. Okay. And so one one of the things which makes me think about this as well is, for example, one of the things I would personally be interested into is to see how robots with lidar or other hardware uh, uh, which are not allowed in. Uh, humanoid league so for example if you want to have um an imu in all your server motors in order to improve the estimate of the position of your robot you're not allowed to play in uh, the classical competition so for me this would also be an option for people who want to i think test imu is not hardware. the problem lidar would yeah. be a problem imu in every server would be no no the, the rules currently yeah. states that you have only one May, maybe we can uh, um, yeah. discuss this a little bit later because um, the second step will be kind of uh, collecting ideas and there could be the idea from ludovic to have uh, imus in every joint or uh, having some special kind of, of robots. So that could be your idea. Um, and yes, you're right. There are different views. And um, the task of this workshop actually is to, to find a common ground for all these views uh, um, or to willingly exclude some of those views uh, if we consider them to, to affect the overall idea. But uh, th this will be actually part of uh, the second and the third part. Um, yeah. Okay, so, right. so the, ma the main we... idea in two yes. words is sh do we want this league to be only for people who are not used in Robocop or do we want to keep it open for people who are already participating in the humanoid league? Th that's the point. That's yeah. one thing that we have to discuss later on. Yep. Um, but yes, we need to sort of figure out exactly how we want to do that. Uh, one of the concerns that I would have is that if we make the open category more open, then that automatically would mean that every RoboCup kit size or teen size or uh, adult size qualified team can also join the open category with no changes to their robot, most likely. And then we have to sort of think about if that's what we want or if uh, we don't want that. Uh, you have to pick one only or, but then it becomes very complicated. So I want to talk about that a little bit later on when we talk about the rules. Uh, so I'll just continue with uh, sort of the general outline. Um, H1 uh, on March, 20th of March, 
we had a uh, joint Skype call with uh, people that have expressed interest in the open category previously. And uh, some of the conclusions that we came up with, I was trying, I actually, I remember that I wrote the minutes for this particular meeting. Um, but, and I wanted to add it here, but I couldn't quite work it out. But um, the idea was to have games with uh, the junior people as well as the other participants. Uh, they should have basically the same or similar task, but they should be scored separately. Um, they may even be playing matches against each other, but then the trophies would be sort of for the junior category separate from the other categories, I would think. Uh, playing fields are based on the humanoid league fields. Uh, the reason for that is that um, I think it will be very motivating for RoboCup Junior people to be able to play on the same field as the adults have to play on the same playing surface and the same environment if they can be on the same uh, pitch where the other teams are preparing. I think this is very motivating. Uh, vice versa, I think there will be very little interest of um, humanoid league participants to do any event on the junior field. Um, so that means that we're basically stuck with the playing surface that the humanoid league uses at the moment. It would be the AstroTurf. Um, however, we can change the rest of the setup as long as we can make it lightweight. So we can have different goals, we can have different balls, corner posts, or field lines that we can roll out, uh, for example, yellow tape on top of the uh, AstroTurf, things like that. Uh, using that also, of course, we can change the dimension of the pitch. Uh, that's not, um, I should add that in there. So that we can play four matches on a, I think we can probably put four uh, smaller fields onto the kid size fields and probably six onto the adult size, six or eight even on the adult size, so that we can make more efficient use of the space. Uh, we hope, I hope that having the teams work together in a joint pitch like that will lead to more interaction and uh, the organization will be shared by Roll Cup Junior and the Humanoid League uh, organizing committee. So exactly how to do that, I haven't, um, I don't have any further ideas on that, but I'm sure that it's possible. Uh, also, I copied an email from Oscar van Struck, uh, one of the trustees of RoboCup. Uh, trustees are very supportive of this idea in general but um, uh, they are, they, they're now waiting for sort of detailed rules um, of the competition, as well as the detailed goals and target group for the competition. And uh, I think uh, we should have run it as a demo event uh, this year. We would have been able to do that. Um, unfortunately, because of the COVID pandemic, that wasn't possible. But I think um, we have now enough time to prepare for a demo event in 2021 in Bordeaux. Yeah, so I think this, this is kind of a good introduction and um, maybe we, we move on to some ideas of, of robots uh, that have been shown. Um, some people have been working with uh, on, on this. And uh, maybe we start with the uh, with the RoboCup Junior demo, which was done in 2018 at at the RoboCup. So these are um, uh, the the left three images, uh, um, three or four robots um, prepared by some advanced junior teams, are playing on the on the regular junior. Uh, soccer fields playing with an orange ball, which is quite similar to one of the balls we've been using, I think, for one year in the Humanoid League, too. 
and uh, the performance was not bad. Huh? Um, so this was done in 2018, and of course there are a lot of people in the junior league uh, kind of following up on this. So what I did then um, was uh, as, as a classroom exercise, um, which I called bottom line robot exercise. So what would be the, the most simplistic uh, robot uh, we could think of to, to work with? And um, initially this was some kind of uh, one or in, in your standards half uh, credit uh, effort. Uh, for students, uh, which was even made harder through um, the COVID uh, pandemic. Um, so the basic idea was doing uh, four degrees of freedom uh, bipedal robot and um, doing this with uh, an Arduino and uh, a Pixie cam, a CMU cam, um, so kind of smart cam. And um, there's the, the board the students have been using. Well, it's an intermediate snapshot, so some of the stuff is still missing. And um, actually this, this board we are showing here um, is part of uh, a second class. Uh, I kind of split this up. There was an undergraduate uh, level with um, Arduino and there was uh, a graduate level working with um, uh, Raspberry Pi and uh, a Pi Cam, uh, stuff like that. Um, yeah, things went even more complicated through um, um, because of uh, the COVID pandemic. Uh, we had a shutdown. So uh, the left two images um, have been done by um, a student who had an Arduino at home and a little bit of wiring and um, he cut some feet from cardboard and some legs from, from plywood, whatever. Um, so this device actually is able to, to walk and to kick, though the size is uh, quite small. Huh? So because he only had very small servo motors available, um, uh, there was just a uh, uh, reduction on size. Um, this again then is a more, um, uh, um, at the bottom, uh, it's more sophisticated robots uh, done with 3D printing. Uh, it's more or less um, um, a standard approach. Uh, the left one again is working with the Pixie Cam. If you if you like, you can uh, zoom into this um, on your on your Myra board. So this actually is the Arduino Pixie Cam, a power bank used and slightly stronger motors. Uh, but you will probably recognize it's very crooky design uh, with um, uh, fixing the uh, the servo motors to the to the structure. And um, the oops uh, the the experts uh, of RoboCup League will probably uh, recognize the orange uh, color, which is not according to rules uh, because the the ball may be orange but that was due to the fact that the students only had um, uh, some filament, uh, some orange filament left. So this could be some um, initial approach for, for kind of robots. Of course, they have to, to scale in size and they may also need to um, scale in, in performance. Huh? Uh, even though they're shown on this turf we've been using earlier, um, they also, well, I don't know for the very basic one, but they also were able to work on the on the turf we're using. And then um, Jackie also provided some um, some ideas of robots which um, may be more similar to to what we use at uh, the Humanoid League. So maybe Jackie, you would like to to add some. Yeah. So I think uh, this this list of robots uh, here that uh, uh, the uh, Robocop Junior demo, the uh, robots that uh, were designed in uh, Reinhardt's lab, uh, the robots that I'm going to be talking about, I think we should look at those not as what we want teams to build, but sort of what the design space could be, uh, what most likely teams uh, that would like to participate in this event uh, are thinking of when they think about trying to build uh, robot. So, um, if uh, yeah, if you can go to 
uh, the first picture here, there's a YouTube video. This would be a kind of robot that would have participated in the uh, kit size, humanoid league kit size, probably up to about 2008. Uh, my team ran it. It's based on a robotist bioloid kit. Uh, that one is not actually sold anymore at the moment. Um, now it's called the Robotis Engineer Kit 1 and 2, and they have a similar robot system like that. And um, it is uh, a robot that uh, me and my students designed, uh, and we use it during workshops at uh, Changwon Robot Land Foundation, where we teach uh, introductory humanoid robotics to um, undergraduate students and uh, also some high school students. Uh, one thing sort of to keep in that is a little bit special about that is the vision system has been simplified a lot by using a CMU vision module. I think it's version three. I'm not 100% sure about which version they're using. Uh, so you can basically do blob detection very easily and uh, um, that simplifies things a lot. And then uh, during the virtual Rohal workshop uh, two days ago, the team from Berlin presented a um, more complex uh, humanoid open hardware platform that they designed. Uh, it's targeted at education and research, but it's a bipedal walker. You can see the picture on the right hand side. If, uh, yep. And uh, this is actually a pretty interesting design. Uh, they're obviously very interested in the mechanics and the control of the system because they're replacing the controller board for the servo motors in order to. Uh, be able to provide uh, torque feedback and high accuracy position feedback. Uh, the mechanics use timing belts. Um, uh, looks like they have a touch sensor or a PSD for the feet in order to be able to detect when the foot touches the ground. Uh, so this is another kind of device that I can see uh, teams would be would be, that would be interested in competing in this particular league would be uh, building. And so um, with that in mind, I think, uh, are there any other kind of robot systems that you think uh, teams would build? Um, once we have an idea for that, then we can move on to sort of decide what the rules should look like if uh, we have these kind of robots uh, in they want to play soccer and we need to come up with a, a fair rule set that allows them to play soccer and have fun uh, lead to interesting games. Okay, um, moving stuff always is a question of um um the level you're at um you so can maybe... just lock the things reinhardt if you click yeah, yeah. on it you can lock it and then people can't shift it around anymore yeah <laughs> actually I, I i yeah okay uh it could be possible but this is one of the intentions to 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 uh, move the familiarize. entire board around but people do this unintentionally it really yeah. It, it is really difficult for people on, on some devices to, to not move it around. It should be locked now. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so I will find your name and I'm familiar with my robots then. Um, okay. So this is part of the, uh, the workshop um, thing we now, uh, we now do is um, that everybody could put in, uh, put in his or her own ideas. Huh? So we kind of structured this. Of course, you don't have to fill in uh, everything. Um, so what's your idea about the robot? Why is this especially relevant? For example, if, if Ludovic thinks about um, uh, the, the leader as, as a scanner, why this is um, especially relevant? 
um, what would be the contextual situation? So will it be um, uh, school pupils? Will it be researchers who are just not happy with the strict rule set? Things like that. So there's some fields here, and uh, maybe you can pick some of the the sticky notes. Well, you could use some um, some of those available. You could use some from from the pile down here, or you could of course uh, generate your your own. Maybe you would like to have a special color. Is there a special meaning to the color? Is this like some sort no. of canvas thing that I don't know about? No, maybe you want to structure this in some way. Maybe you want to link this to your own name. I think the pile typically is considered to be linked to names, uh, but um, we don't care about this. So just pick the color you like most. Um, yeah, so um, we would like to collect this now. Um, initially, well, we have, we have some time planned for this. Uh, I think uh, 10 minutes should be well sufficient. Um, so maybe let's go ahead collecting our ideas. And of course, if you want to, because I, I think the group isn't too, uh, too large, so we could uh, kind of um, use the audio channel here. Um, in other cases, one may like to create some breakout rooms and form some extra groups to uh, to talk about this. Um, I have a question. So yeah. basically, um, there were now two different proposals. One is basically make a open research demonstration or open human uh, demonstration, and the target group is researchers that already have a robot and. Then we would like not be restrictive at all, and the other target group is like people that do not have the money to or do not have the university funding uh, and want to build a cheap robot for like a hundred euros. Um, so I think the yeah the the rules for those two target groups should be very different, and I'm not quite sure um, at which group this um, proposal is targeted right now. What would be your uh, target? Or if you have two, then um, you just um, do something like this. Maybe we combine, can combine something like uh, having a hundred euro robot compete against, uh, against let's say, hundred million euro robots. I think uh, we never had any costs, uh, constraints on the robot. So, um, Whatever rules we come up with, there may be a possibility that the team will come up with a one million dollar robot to compete uh, in that event. I think uh, we shouldn't focus on the cost of the robot. Rather, we should be focusing on sort of the minimum set of capabilities. Yeah, so what I, I would like to see is I don't care if somebody spends more money to enter this league. But uh, I think we should structure the rules in such a way that a cheap robot and cheap sort of depends on exactly how cheap, I'm not sure, is able to participate. May not win anymore uh, or may have a harder time winning, but uh, it should still be able to participate, I feel. So these, these kind of robots that we've seen on the top, uh, the rules that we design, they should be such that these kind of robots can, maybe with some uh, variation or some extension, are able to compete, uh, participate. I think um, Oscar van Strick, uh, like really mentioned that in his, his note that you attached um, with its point number one, uh, its goals and target group. Um, for example, is it a new entry for humanoid league research oriented teams or is it for junior with education oriented teams? So, so we're still collecting ideas. What would be yeah. your idea? What, what, uh, what would 
be your view of how this should be handled? This is um, a workshop, huh? it's not a presentation. Yeah. <laughs> so I think both ideas are valid, but I'm not quite sure if they can uh, work in conjunction because then it's a very uneven playing field. Um, Excuse um, me. Hello. Uh, could you please um, uh, uh, give me access to my um, uh, uh, desktop screen? I have several charts and several proposals for this uh, uh, competition type. Um, Reiner, I think is that we're fine with you. Um, it will kind of uh, screw up the entire approach. Uh, so maybe we can do that later then. No, yeah, but, I would propose. To, if you can, can you can you paste it into the board? Uh, it is very difficult for me <clears throat> uh, because there is also a screenshot. If you take a screenshot of a, whatever you want to show and copy it, then you can paste it into the board, and then everybody can see it. And we have a record of it. I'm not familiar with this type of uh, Miro, and uh, I'm more familiar with the traditional <laughs> presentations. And uh, so I have prepared my um, charts because I have already studied all these uh, rules, which has been proposed from your side. And I have um, several comparisons and uh, uh, also proposals because we have very big experience in Russia <clears throat> with um, this type of the competition. Um, if it relates to rules, then we will have another part uh, where we will focus on rules. Um, it also so relates to um, uh, the uh, question which you sounded right now, that what kind of the proposals about what kind of the robots could be participating in this type of the things. And, uh, this is uh, what I want to pre present from my side. Hmm. Um, how much time do you need for that? Yeah, just let him show the slides then. Yes, yes I'll show a little bit slides and uh, um, we can... Uh, or actually, you can, you can stop me anytime, okay? Mm -hmm. um, Are you okay Mike? with this being recorded? Yes, yes, it's okay. Okay, so wait Mike, a second. Probably you will have to change it. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. You can stop screen sharing and then he should be able to share his screen now. Okay. Should have stopped now. Azar, you should have the control panel for screen sharing now. Okay. Do you see it? Yeah. Is, okay. it, is it currently? Yeah. Uh, okay. So <clears throat> I would like to present Robocop Junior Humanoid Soccer Challenge, which is uh, already several years uh, under development in, in Russia. And it is based on uh, uh, humanoid uh, 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 soccer rules uh, from 2007, from the year 2007. And, um, oh, okay. Uh, so uh, admissible robots uh, are, uh, uh, you can see in the middle, uh, uh, the most uh, um, frequently used robots. Uh, this is Bioloid uh, with uh, smart camera. And with some uh, uh, additional upgrades, uh, which uh, the teams can um, uh, produce from their own side. Another type of the robot could be in the left side. You can see this is Condor robot uh, with upgraded smart camera and also with reinforced joints and uh, some different mechanical improvements. And also any other type of the robot me meeting the size and the weight requirements. Size and, and weight requirements is the weight is below two kilogram and maximum height is 50 centimeter. Proportion of the ram uh, of the arms, uh, center of mass and foot size according to the uh, Robocop uh, humanoid kit size rules. Uh, the ball diameter is uh, 80 millimeter. It is sponge ball with uh, 28 grams uh, orange color. Uh, the field of the play is um, uh, the green carpet with three millimeter pile height and uh, the to overall size is three meter by four meter. <clears throat> uh, this is a picture of how this uh, field is looking like on a uh, competition site. And uh, you see the uh, equipment to build up the field is very simple. It is uh, just a sanitary pipe uh, which masking tape. 
<coughs> history of the tournaments is as follows. There was totally uh, five registered tournaments uh, in this uh, type of the um, competition. First two were demo games. Uh, they were uh, happened in 2018 and 2019 with two teams. And uh, then there was official uh, game of three teams uh, in 2019. And uh, also, um, uh, uh, the, uh, one of the latest happening one was um, in November 2019 with five teams participating. And also uh, the planet on the March to 2020, but postponed to September. 16, uh, six teams were registered for participation. <clears throat> and uh, this is initial uh, how this um, uh, was looking like. Uh, and uh, uh, these are uh, uh, the demo games, uh, and uh, these were two teams uh, having the, um, uh, the um, robots with in their hands. And um, uh, this is uh, uh, the picture from uh, um, uh, RoboCup Russia Open uh, uh, competition. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, RoboCup Asia Pacific in November 2019 in Moscow. And would you mind, I uh, also a little bit show you the video from this. And um, currently we are um, under development of contact, contactless competition. And this we're going to do on based on uh, Capelli's SIM software. And uh, uh, you can see how this uh, type of the competition could be happening. And uh, the teams are, uh, have to prepare their uh, robot models uh, in, uh, for the um, simulation and then transfer the robot uh, models to the, um, uh, to the referee who will launch these models uh, on the server. And uh, then um, uh, uh, this is um, uh, the reaction on uh, pandemia and uh, because the teams are not uh, able to meet each other. Um, uh, so uh, uh, this could be one of the opportunities for them uh, to be able to compete each other with their algorithms, uh, but uh, through the distance. So um, uh, this is a chart I have prepared after um, reading uh, the rules proposed from the um, organizers. And in the left uh, top chart, you can see the maximum size of the robot is proposed one meter and maximum weight of 10 kilograms. Currently used uh, size uh, uh, in, the, in the right side is uh, maximum size of the robot is half meter and maximum weight is two kilograms. Uh, we have to consider that our um, potential participant mostly are going to be juniors. And uh, for the juniors, uh, uh, the um, using of the big robots is dangerous. And uh, in below, uh, in, in underneath uh, chart, you can see various, uh, uh, it's just reference for the type of the robot. Doesn't mean that you have to use exactly this robot. You can build the robot by yourself, but this is a, 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 class, a class of the robot uh, uh, which you can refer to. And uh, in the bottom now, 
uh, uh, now is uh, prohibited for using uh, uh, by juniors. This is uh, prohibited by SoftBank Robotics because uh, um, uh, their uh, um, servo motors are too strong and they can damage uh, 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 the fingers of, of the kids. And uh, uh, this is why um, five kilograms uh, robot uh, uh, is, is very dangerous for the, for the, for the juniors. And uh, um, this is why uh, this uh, robot has, has been limited uh, by two kilograms because um, even a Darwin robot is already not for the uh, junior students. This is already for the, uh, for the university students. And uh, if we put, um, we, and uh, you have to know that Darwin and Bioloid is produced with the same manufacturer, but this is different class um, of the robots, completely different class of the robots. And if they compete to each other, uh, we will see that, uh, of course, Darwin will win. And uh, this will be discouraging for the young uh, students uh, um, who are um, using Bioloid, but they are not able to use a Darwin because it is prohibited by the education system. Uh, so the ball comparison uh, opposite uh, a ball uh, uh, from organizers is FIFA size one. Uh, and okay, uh, now you've been going on for like 10 minutes, so you really have to shut the uh, speed okay. up or come to conclusion. Okay, thank you. Thank you for attention. Yeah, okay. Thank I, don't know how, I don't know how to stop it. Um, I think it's Michael will have to do it. It's already stopped. Okay. Okay. So, um, so thank you, thank you for your um, for your input on this. Um, I think there there are a lot of the valuable um, ideas. Um, so, basically, uh, what I captured is the maximum size of uh, half a meter, two kilograms of weight. Uh, we need to solve the, oops, the safety issues. Um, and so there, there was um, a lot of interesting things. Uh, I understood that your focus is uh, primarily on, um, on junior students. Um, yes, or yes, exactly. Uh, which is a good view. Um, previously, um, Ludovic uh, mentioned that um, there also should be kind of more advanced researchers interested in some specific research questions. Um, so apparently we have a lot of um, uh, interesting uh, requirements. Maybe we have too many requirements to put them all to in one uh, solution, but uh, possibly we find a way. Um, so is there anything anybody urgently has to, um, to add to the idea about um, the robot design? Huh? So well, I think those constraints are uh, too tight. Um, I, the whole idea is to have a very flexible league. Uh, to limit it to 2kg is uh, much too light, I think. Um, yeah, but the uh, the somebody posted about the Boston Dynamic robot joining. I think if that happens, then we definitely need two size classes or something like that. But um, to to limit it to two kg, personally, I think uh, that uh, is stricter than than anything I would have expected. Uh, Heinrich raised his hand, but also I wanted to ask, are we discussing this? Are we commenting on this now? Or are we just collecting ideas and now moving on? But before we that, yeah, Heinrich. We yeah, well, the point is we should kind of finalize collecting the ideas because we already run behind the schedule and we still have uh, the rules part to discuss. And there may be some, um, some insight coming from the rule part. Um, Maybe so one quick comment by Heinrich, though. Yeah, 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 of course. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, yeah, so I have, I have a couple, you know, small thoughts to add. So one thought is that I'm still, like, listening to, I mean, it sounds uh, very interesting, but also very broad. 
So right now I'm a little confused as uh, to how to, you know, uh, the competition would connect the, the juniors and let's say an Atlas robot. So what is the common interest? So that's one question I think to be resolved. And then uh, the other thing that, um, you know, I want to add actually is that uh, robot Gretchen, well, that we, uh, that we are working on right now, actually emerged from, from some ex robocoppers and there are some startups behind uh, uh, that robot, uh, which are also organized by robocoppers who are trying to somehow, um, um, you know, um, stay in touch with robocop as well. And I think uh, some of the things they do is they try to create like open source, open platform toolkits for uh, for education and so on. And I think there are there might be more ex robocoppers, which basically the like robocop community is not making use of one could say right. So maybe some sort of mentorship program or like connection between where like a major team or like a major company or something, you know. Uh, uh, supports the junior teams or something like that. So where there is a knowledge tra transfer and maybe this could be the connection. Okay, thank you. So, um, okay, so if, uh, unless there's any other urgent um, comment, um, I would, well, Michael raises her hand too. Uh, she uses a check mark. Oh, uh, that was long time ago. I okay. just uh, said something mm -hmm. then at some point. Okay. Um, but it would be helpful, Reinhardt and Jackie, if you keep monitoring the participant list if people raise their hand and use check marks. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit hard for me with the uh, with the Myra board open. Um, so. The um, I, I kind of zooming in into this uh, idea description. Um, um, so there are a few things uh, mentioned here. Um, um, well, two legs that was obvious. Um, there was this idea of uh, only field players. Um, um, there was this idea of few restrictions, uh, but safety was an issue. Um, this kind of uh, relates to to the size, uh, which may solve this issue. Um, the drop-in approach, um, and there was this uh, note. Uh, yeah, we assume that participants are able to safely operate their own robots. Um, so this is kind of uh, uh, a good uh, uh, ground to to work with. Um, yeah, our robots achievable by students, so very cheap. Uh, why this idea is uh, especially relevant? Um, uh, to allow robot like HRP Atlas to participate. Okay, um, to to kind of broaden the community. Yeah? Reinhard, do you think it's useful to go through all of this now because everyone can look over this and if this is shared afterwards maybe okay. it helps more to use the the time to go on with the rules and then maybe open for discussion in just the the voice channel here as well okay maybe good idea to catch up some of the time um okay I... so the board is board is still open so if you want to add some stuff afterwards there's still a space and you know how to do this um Actually, uh... Raimondo uh, Scroll, he sent a message. Uh, his team participated in the demo together with uh, Irene's team. Uh, so maybe he could say a couple of things about uh, his view of this uh, open category competition and uh, what he thinks uh, about the whole affair. Raimondo, he posted on Zoom, uh, or maybe he left. Okay, then never mind. Then we move ahead. He is okay. still there, but maybe he will uh, come back. I sent him a chat message, but uh, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Hi. No. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 yeah good morning. 
Okay, I think um, we we have to focus on junior teams because uh, we we have to try to to encourage transition between junior and major. So we have to start uh, from junior guys. The, um, in the, in this year, my students um, uh, tried several times to to move forward uh, to to measure to measure league, but but is is quite difficult. So uh, in other leagues, um, for example, um, in rescue and uh, um, at home, there's two um, middle step. Uh, category, um, rescue mini and uh, at home education, and so we have to try to do something for junior teams, uh, and uh, I, I think uh, um, we have to start from junior uh, spirit. Good. That that was. Uh, um, I think that that's a very good comment, uh, very valuable comment. Um, which goes a bit back and that's why i said maybe let's keep this to after because i think there have been already yeah, quite a bit of comments yeah. on uh, what is actually the the goal of this and there are different opinions on, on that so maybe we can just discuss that all okay. of us and give all of us the time to say something about that yeah yeah uh you, you're perfectly right because we already are way behind schedule um so let's very shortly talk about the rule evolution um I know there were a lot of people uh, discussing this and uh, there have been a lot of proposals. Um, so I think the Humanoid League kind of started in uh, 2017 with um, this kind of rookie league, which we uh, named the proposal one page. Um, there have been a lot of uh, considerations in the uh, junior part with uh, different kind of rules starting from previous uh, humanoid rules. Um, I know Irene did some, uh, Azar did some, uh, which is mostly about 20 pages pretty much to, to what we did uh, before. Um, then we had this discussion in the humanoid league about uh, the different uh, um, um, approaches for junior and for advanced teams, uh, which then resulted in an open uh, competition rule uh, for small and for large robots. So there's, there was this idea of adding an adult size open competition. And um, eventually um, we kind of, um, um, well, uh, focused on this extraction for just the junior part, which again is, uh, um, uh, three pages only, very small size, um, uh, for, for the small size only. And uh, I just recognize Irene is still working on a, on a rule proposal, uh, which is about eight pages, but there's still work in progress. So there are a lot of, um, um, of proposals. If you want to, to look into those, visiting the, the Myra board after some time, you should be able to uh, to see the subsequent pages too, um, because it takes some time to to download, uh, and, and of course you you will have to to zoom in to make this visible. Um, so there's a long history of of rules, and and uh, yeah, Jackie, <laughs> uh, but please take over. Uh, take over uh, the rule discussion. I think um, one idea that I found uh, attractive for this particular league would be to try and have a minimum set of rules, uh, focusing only on the actual task of scoring goals in soccer, making sure that that is uh, fair. One of the things that Reinhard brought in with his rules, which I think is actually a, an interesting idea, is to remove the goalkeeper from the competition so that each team really only has to play with one player. Um, I think if we wanted to move to um, teams with goalkeepers and a striker, then uh, 
I think uh, then I would prefer to have joint teams rather than asking teams to build two robots and then uh, four robots uh, three years down the road. Uh, because then I think we're moving uh, very much in the direction of the humanoid league. We'd be sort of going through the rule evolution of the humanoid league only delayed by eight years. And I don't think that should be the, the goal of this particular competition. Um, so uh, to have that, I also think uh, we want to reduce the necessity for extra uh, work such as automatic placement, things like that, I think they can be introduced uh, quite quite some time in the distance. I don't think the robots need to listen to the game controller, for example, like they need to do in the humanoid league. All of that should be um, spread out. So the question will be what would be the minimum amount of uh, rules that we need in order to have a fair competition? Also bearing in mind that we will probably have rooms, uh, uh, robots with very different capabilities, possibly very different weights and uh, different sizes. Now, I don't think we'll be looking at a 30 centimeter robot competing against a 1.8 meter tall robot, um, but I think um, there will still be quite a bit uh, difference in height and uh, weight of the robots. So I like the yeah. idea of having no contact, for example, if there's a way to encourage that or enforce that, I think that will be a, a very good thing to do. Okay, so maybe then we follow the similar approaches with the robot design. Of course, there are some overlaps. Um, and um, we should now collect some views on uh, the different aspects of, of rules. Um, yeah, there, there was this, uh, Asa, you wanted to, to uh, yes, comment please. on this? But yes, maybe yes. for all the others, uh, already start um, putting your, your stickies to the, uh, to the board uh, to collect your ideas. And now, uh, Asa, please. I think, uh, I think I do need to reload the uh, Myra, Myro because there's a lot of sticky notes on there which you cannot see. I need to reload. Okay. No, it's not the same screen, I think, uh, Jasper. It's a uh, it's, uh, board for rules. Oh, sorry. It's a board for yeah, okay. the first part. Okay, now you also see who, who is doing what. <laughs> okay, Asa, please, uh, yes. you wanted to, to comment. Yes, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, comment about ball size because uh, mm, uh, the ball size, um, uh, which is proposed FIFA size one, is uh, for the juniors is very, very uh, big one. And um, uh, we have experience in uh, uh, playing with the ball of 28 grams and 60 grams. And it appears that uh, with 60 grams ball, uh, no one player can uh, shoot uh, the penalty uh, shoot. And uh, because uh, maximum distance which could be achievable is 0 0.8 meter. Uh, rolling of the ball after uh, uh, um, and uh, but the uh, normal uh, distance for the um, uh, um, uh, penalty is 90 centimeters and uh, uh, so for this reason we um, changed the ball to lighter one to eight, 28 grams but the weight of the FIFA size one ball is 205 grams is nearly three point times larger and uh, in this case, uh, no one of the um, robots from uh, kid size can kick the ball, which can be rolled uh, for, the, um, uh, for the distance uh, more than 20 centimeter. And this is very small distance. It's, it's impossible to play football with such a, such a big ball. And uh, uh, OK, this is uh, one of the points. Can I proceed also to different point? 
Um, yeah, well, there would be just one comment. Um, of course, uh, if you stick to the, the current rule set, then of course we, for example, we need to do a penalty kick, which needs to cross the, uh, the goal area. And uh, if you cannot uh, kick it through the goal area, then of course um, it would not work. But there are different ways to deal with this. The question is if we would still have to have this penalty kick, if we would still require a kick, or if we would allow um, um, Roberts to just push the ball, huh? some kind of dribbling, not kicking. But this is just one way of um, approaching this. So please uh, go on. Yeah, please. Uh, penalty is very important uh, because uh, uh, most of the games uh, are finished with 0-0. Zero, zero, and finally, uh, 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 because this is, these are juniors, these are uh, just the novices in the, in the uh, humanoid soccer. And uh, so uh, for this reason, uh, finally to find uh, who is the winner uh, is penalty kick is only one method. And so we have to respect the penalty kicks uh, as, as a method to find um, a winner of the game. Uh, well, the challenge is to resolve ties. And we could do this through penalty kick, but we could do this through time, uh, a coin toss, for example. Okay. We don't want to do that. <laughs> Things we could yes. do. Yeah. Uh, the best game when uh, uh, the, the the goal has been achieved during the game. This is the uh, most uh, exciting game, and uh, <clears throat> so uh, uh, this is this is one of the comments from me. Another comment is about uh, the turf, uh, turf, the size of the turf, because proposed size of the of the turf is thirty millimeter. And uh, if we uh, look to the uh, most uh, usable uh, bioloid robots, uh, for example, from six teams we currently have in our portfolio, four are using bioloid robots. And uh, so uh, this is majority of the type of the robots uh, which could be used in this type of the competition. And the bioloid robots, uh, they have uh, um, uh, uh, the maximum uh, uh, elevation of the foot. Uh, in customized guide, it means that not in factory guide, but in customized guide, it could be only 15 millimeter, and means that even if we fix the, uh, uh, fix some spikes on the, on on a sole, uh, still uh, it will be impossible to uh, to walk over the uh, such a high turf. Uh, this is one uh, uh, reason uh, not to use the turf for this type of the. Uh, to, to this type of the robots. Another reason is how they are working, because uh, uh, they don't have enough um, uh, freedoms of uh, um, uh, uh, enough dimensions of freedom in order to be able uh, to turn around without uh, uh, um, uh, with uh, rising uh, the legs um, uh, up, uh, because a normal a normal way of the turning for them is that uh, one leg uh, just shifted forward, other leg shifted uh, backwards. And this way, uh, only, only this way they can turn, uh, this, this way they can turn. If we consider different kind of the robots, like Honda robot, they have more um, dimensions of frequency, of, uh, uh, of freedom, sorry, dimensions of freedom. And they can turn by rising the leg. So for them, for them, it is not a big uh, difficult, uh, difficult uh, to um, use uh, the turf. But even for them, uh, uh, the turf uh, cannot be uh, higher than eight millimeter because size of the robot is not such big so to, to rise, um, to elevate uh, um, foot uh, to, to, the, uh, to the bigger distance from the floor. Okay, this is my comment about uh, pile height. Thank you very okay. much. Um... Limited uh, capabilities of robot. Uh, capabilities of robots. This is some uh, some issue we need to resolve. Okay. Any any urgent stuff we or important stuff to to add to the to the rule discussion? I think the rule discussion is sort of lots of activity at the moment from what I can see. Uh, oh, some time are expired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to remind you of uh, 
we have limited time on this earth. But then um, we just continue for another stop. five minutes. Yeah, sure. Also, I just found out you can link ideas to other ideas, which is kind of neat. So if you uh, referring to some other note, you can actually link, like draw an arrow from yours to theirs, um, which may help structure the thing a little bit. So I think one of the central points is. Uh, uh, does anybody from the guests uh, from the RoboCup Junior side um, would you be able to guess how many teams would be uh, interested in taking part in a demonstration next year? If we uh, if we send out a call for participation. Uh, yes, uh, 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 this is Azerbaijan. I'm from Russia, and uh, uh, we definitely are interested in this type of the um, uh, demonstration participation. Okay, thanks. At least we have uh, 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 two or three teams which can uh, definitely can uh, approach uh, to the um, to France. And I guess uh, one thing that we haven't talked about uh, with simplified rules, I think is that as long as we can make it fair, uh, we don't need to be so strict about the handlers on the pitch. I think uh, we can have teams walk on and uh, take care of their robot to avoid contacts and things like that. Um, that's something that has developed a lot in the kid size league and the humanoid leagues in recent years. Um, but I don't think it should be so important for this particular competition. I think that's also quite a valid comment on the chat uh, that we probably should uh, decide the target junior or research of this competition before defining the rules as this confusion has been raised by some people uh, already. Uh, well, uh, whenever you try to focus on um, some domain, you get beaten by the other. Um, this is one of the, the challenges for the organizers, actually. So, yeah, we'll Okay, we, we can decide or we follow. I think uh, it was Ludovic bringing up the idea uh, to uh, kind of having two divisions or two, two leagues or two competitions for, um, for different um, levels. Okay, so Michael raises her hand. Well, this Maybe. is a workshop. <laughs> May. So just talk. Yeah. Well, but if the, the thing is, if everyone tries to talk at the same time, that's also not a good idea. Uh, so, may, but maybe what we are trying to do here is actually trying to discuss two very different leaks in one. So maybe what, so maybe there is not one leak that's going to fit all of this. So maybe this junior bridging is a different event from the human right open competition. So maybe the start would be to discuss even if this is if this is even like one leak we're discussing or if you're discussing about two leaks. 
But right now we also need to sort of think about instead of just running leaks, um, where we would get teams for an open category that is not inclusive of RoboCup Junior, for example. Um, so I think right now from the feedback that we're getting, uh, a lot of people are mostly focusing on the small, low-cost humanoids. That has nothing to do with Junior. I think you can still do very valid research with the Bioloid if you're not constrained to uh, the RoboCup Humanoid League rules. But this is not what we have right now in the contextual situations, for example, and this is also not what we've been discussing in the humanoid leaks, leak internally and with the trustees now for a while, which had this focus on the humanoid open competition, very much focused on research groups that already have humanoid robots that maybe want to compete, but not I want to that would rebuild be the their robots. Large size then. I don't see anybody... Uh, I don't see Boston Dynamics showing up with a Bioloid. No, but even, but sure, but even if you have research groups that have a smaller robot, for example, a robot that they do other things with uh, already, yeah. and that is a small robot, it's still a question of if it's fair to have them competing against junior teams. No, the junior teams, they would be playing in the same environment, but they will be scored uh, separately. So they would not ever compete against the other teams? They may compete in a match, but then uh, they would get, uh, let's say all the teams play together in round robins, and then uh, the top two junior teams will go into the final and the top two um, adult teams will go into the final. But One of the... <laughs> advantages that we have would uh, with this competition is that we can we can actually have them we can provide a more exciting environment for let's call them young researchers whether they're undergraduates or uh, junior and uh, have them compete with more professional if they are undergrads if they're undergrads, maybe, but if they are proper research teams, then I don't then know how interesting it is if you always lose 30 to zero as a junior team because you are competing against a, like a full professional research team. Yeah, well, in that case, then we, I, can, uh, we can still look at the, I, I mean, we can deal with this if it happens. I don't really think that's a realistic um, I think this is way too damaging for the entire league to deal with that. If this happens, then afterwards, there is going to be very, very low interest in this happening again because people are going to be very discouraged. Their own, they're, all, they're also going to play against their own teams. The junior, I mean, we're trying to get everybody play against everybody else. That should be, would be my preference. Okay, so Ludovic wants to chip in with some comments. Yeah, yeah. The, the problem is definitely, and that's one of the points, like for me, when we see the whole picture in every part, we see that there's something not matching between requirements which are entirely contradictory. Like, for example, we have some people requiring that the robot should not be more than two kilos. And on the other hand, we have... a uh, every research robots like used by top research team in robotics are more than 30 kilos. So, of course, it's, it's not possible to have on the same pitch uh, the robots which are like 70, 80 kilos and robots built by students. And if we see the, the robots which are shown on the humanoid open competition robots, we see that clearly the robots which are shown are the robots built by students uh, and, and not the robots from Atlas or something else. So, so, so the point is if the proposition is targeted only at junior or entry level for for newcomers 
it's it's not the same thing but i think that we need to have a distinction between the two and that's something that has been raised by uh, several participants i think and something which is coming out of the post-it stuff mm. Yeah, and uh, actually, there's a good idea. Uh, I wanted to mention it too uh, right now, what came from the chat. Maybe it would be interesting to have a poll about uh, the general idea of what people think about dividing the proposed idea into uh, of two competitions. Yeah, I think we, we had this step in the past, um, but we may not have... Um, um, found the proper solution because in the past we had this kind of division between uh, a kid size open competition and an adult size open competition, uh, dividing the whole um, field of robots by size actually. Um, maybe it would be better to have kind of two competitions and the participants decide which uh, competition they would like to compete in. So there should be some kind of entry competition. Maybe we impose some limitations and this should be some advanced competition. Uh, so that would kind of divide between junior or, or new coming teams and uh, more mature teams. We can also use the functionality right right here in this call. I mean, we have um, 17 people, so maybe just to get an idea of what people think here, it might be interesting to just ask them to say yes or no with their participant panel. So yes, if they're interested or if they think it would be a good idea to divide them up somehow and discuss them further separately or no, if they think that should be like a, like a joint, it should be kept the joint thing or voting here of that works as well, obviously, sure. But then um, you have to be quite precise about what you vote on. Like, I, I think uh, clearly Atlas is not gonna compete against the Bioloid. That's why the Darwin doesn't compete against the Jinhua Festus. So we can have different size classes, just like we have in the Humanoid League. Um, I'm against trying to design a competition just for Robocop Junior, just because that would mean that none of the uh, current HL people or uh, other kind of researchers would be interested in joining that. But it could that also case, be. Why, why would be a reason? Why would that be? Why would the Humanoid League even be involved in this? Then? Because it could be an entry level, for example, for I agree, maybe first or second year undergrad student, but the team of just first or second year undergrad students, similar to as they are in my understanding, I've never been in, in uh, the, the junior league, but in my understanding, there are limits, for example, to who can compete. So in junior, for example, they, it can only be the involvement of like teachers to a very, very limited level, for example. So it could be something very similar that we say here, so we can only involve undergrad teachers. Uh, teams up to the second year. Uh, this would involve generally universities as well, but it would still make it a bit of a more fair competition. Um, well, there's I this would, one. Okay, go ahead. I wouldn't Katie. constrain it based on the participants. I would only constrain it based on uh, the kind of robots that we allow. If you, if you make the weight limit two kilograms, then obviously you're going to get uh, mostly junior teams. Okay, but for example, if we just say that people now from the humanoid league can basically decide to switch to this league. So let's say even if we have a very constrained one, and I mean, two kilograms might not be enough, that might not be interesting either for the humanoid teams. So what happens if Robin now decides to just enter this league? I don't think this makes any meaningful competition in the end. I think dividing this not by size class but by level of expertise who is competing makes way more sense that will be hard to judge um but yeah there is a problem with uh and i realized that i'm not sure how to deal with the fact that uh, if we have less strict rules then any team that is in the humanoid league can just join this open category as well and do probably pretty well. And that shouldn't be allowed, I agree. And would probably no, do maybe. just because of them, the all like well, everything involved also in like, so also for junior teams, I guess they are like, they have like a very, 
um, quick overhaul, which is not true for research teams. So they might be competing, gathering experience as the same team for a very long time and then competing against students who don't have this like same level. Well, there was one um, input I received from the junior part. Uh, the junior students would be very in interested in kind of playing in the real environment. So they would be interested in, in playing at the humanoid league field. And probably they are aware of the fact that uh, they're not going to win. This is one of the aspects which we may also uh, keep in mind. But environment to me is different. So, I mean, it's one thing to play on the same field and it's another thing to play against the world champion in the humanoid league. At, at least if I imagine myself in like being a school student again, I'm not sure how, again, exciting what this has been as I have a match. And that's something we are already it, trying to uh, solve. Even though uh, you lose, everybody plays them against them, loses just as badly. Yeah, but that, that's something we are already trying to have. I think that's also one of the reasons why we introduced Division A and B. It's also to ensure more interesting games for everyone. And here, what Michael is highlighting, I think, is that the gap in level would even be larger uh, or might be. Uh, and that's something you, you say that teams who are participating in the humanoid league should not be allowed to register to this humanoid open competition. Well, th this means that clearly the intention behind creating this league is to make an entry point and not to have some place with less restriction on the hardware no, to allow no, I mean, for experimentation. Be allowed to just take the same robot and enter. If they have two different types of robots or something like that, I think that would be okay. I just don't think you should be able to enter two competitions, two full soccer competitions with the, the same robot. But the problem is to define what is the same robot and not the same robot is not so easy. I think one thing based on experience, I think that's very difficult because uh, you take how many years they've been working with robots, uh, what year in school they are. I think we could have an age limit, but then uh, and somebody, uh, Roimando, uh, suggested that in the chat, and I think that can make sense so that you say it must be less younger than 23, for example. But I think that is quite, that's not such a good idea for university context. That's what I was actually just typing because you have, you have students, for example, who like take a gap year or two gap years in between, and then they have the same experience level. And a lot of people in their own um, like peer group would be able to compete then, but then others wouldn't be anymore just because they started studying later. So I think this would actually quite, quite, be too excluding, especially in an environment like university, where it's sometimes difficult for older students who have the same experience as the younger students be accepted in the same group. So I don't think that would be a nice idea in the university context. And even it, this keeps us back to the fact if we introduce a limit at the age of 22, we are creating an entry league and not a league with less hardware constraint. So, well, so actually, that's the whole point why maybe it should be split in two leagues, I think. And there's already, uh, I think, three requests of making a poll about this. Um, well, two points. One, we are, um, are beyond our um, ending time, but uh, I think this is very important and we should um, soon agree on how to... Um, continue with this. Uh, maybe we need to, uh, to live with some kind of conflicts we're going to have. Uh, maybe we, we have to live with the conflicts of some team building up on existing. We will have some teams buying some kits and just doing very little, very little work on this. We may have some teams with a completely new built robots, something like that. 
Um, and we may also have uh, humanoid league teams uh, trying to join the, the open competition. For example, Ludovic uh, building his robot with a leader, which is not allowed to play in the humanoid league, but he may want to compete in some competition with that. Uh, just an example, Ludovic, sorry. Um, so no problem. Maybe uh, maybe we need to uh, to keep this open and live with the problems that may come from it. Uh, if you're a fresh I team, of course. Do a poll, but uh, the poll, I think uh, the question that we need to ask is, um, do we split this into two separate events? One, which is not just junior, but also, let's say, more or less, uh, students uh, younger than 22 and then another category which is completely open also we expect much larger robots there than by the way um, Mikey can you do a poll in uh, in the zoom meeting uh, yeah but that's a bit complicated to pass so it, do you do you want to do like a more if you just want to have like a yes no thing it's easier to just like write the question in chat and then ask everyone okay, to use the yes no the in the, and in then the... just just say what which is which so react with yes if and react with no if yeah. and if there are more than one uh, more than two options you can also use one of the other symbols yeah, and just a quick oh, reminder, man. we are over time right now but I think we would give like 12 or more minutes uh, as it's a good discussion, but please try to get into a result and conclusion discussion. Okay. Split yes or no, and then we use the chat uh, function. There should be... If you uh, click on the participant panel, then you see the uh, yes and no buttons under, uh, under your participant view. Let me just type the question. So... Should we split the open category into two sub leagues? One targeted at young researchers. Roughly, uh, what, 20, yeah, less than 23. Or to be defined on what young and research so, yeah. experience means. Or Experience. Where are you typing? In the chat. To In the chat. Okay. Every. Uh, yes, but I don't understand the question. Can you maybe? Uh, uh, well, as far as I understand the question, it's about if we say send. that. So I just send it. Both so shouldn't be at the same. Uh, th those uh, that we have something like two leaks, if it really is necessary to evolve both leaks or leak ideas further. Uh, so yeah, so what I have is, should we split Ryan, the open Ryan, category? Ryan, Jackie, can, can we just hear out what Jasper said before? Yeah. Uh, so basically introducing two leaks at the same time seems like a very ambitious uh, project. Um, and basically to cater for both needs one like uh, major uh, junior major uh, trans transition and then also for other researchers um, and I think like having both starting both leaks at the same time uh, is very organizational uh, org organizationally challenging also with all the fields that would need to be uh, managed and all the schedules so I'm just asking if there's like also the option to not introduce both at the same time I mean, my understanding would be that they might be developed by a different group of, of people further than, and that it depends on how quick their development is. And and, and it must be discussed with the TVC center, of, of course, as well. But my understanding is if we vote now for for the different, um, two different uh, splits, then this would be like separate directions that would, that would not necessarily have the same people involved in both of them. But it is a good point. It is a good point. But I think it's difficult to vote on this because I guess the junior teams would are all in favor of then their category to be moved forward. The HL teams might be more in favor of the other category moved forwards. Yeah, but 
honestly, we have this issue of fresh blood. And uh, yesterday in the exec meeting, we had we've heard this issue by all the other leagues, and there are many other leagues taking care of this in, in some way or the other. Um, and the thing about fresh blood is you always start from zero. So uh, there will be no major evolution except for general advancements of, of science at pupils level. Um, yeah, so if if uh, if we address something for those teams who are already there, we will not um, get too many new teams uh, in the future, and we will trail behind. But okay, Jackie, do you want to ask a question now, maybe? Okay, I'm just going to ask the question. I hope it makes sense uh, based on the discussion and the background of the discussion that we have. Should we split the open category into two sub leagues? One is targeted at young researchers, maybe less than 25 or less than three years of robotics experience or something similar to that. So that would be an entry level leak then. And the second leak would be everybody else. And if you like that proposal, then say yes. And if you don't like it, then say no. So yes. So no would mean that we keep it as like one joint development, right? One league, correct. Yeah. Yes. Yes would I, be we I split. Just cleared, cleared out all the opinions before to make sure that no one has one of the button already activated before the the poll. Just to inform to it. So you need to re-vote yes. now. Yeah, you might need to. The button to is if you before. open the participant views so in the bottom of your Zoom, you should see participants. If you click on this, you should get a participant list. And then in the bottom of that, you have the yes, no buttons. No. Equals. Well, actually, we're talking about competitions, not necessarily uh, leaks. Huh? So, because trustees get nervous when we talk about leaks. Yeah, we fully agree. Sure, yeah. So they may not be called a leak, but for all intents and purposes, they will be a leak. Keep as one. And I just keep leak there uh, for consistency. Leak uh, event. Class. So yes, if you could vote now, please, or say yes or no, and I'll try and find yes or no. At, at uh, the bottom, I it's just the, the green field. I have a thumbs up chat. No, it's the, the very left, uh, the green tick mark. The green mark. Yeah, you uh, have the red with an X and then... No, I don't have anything like that. I have a clap and a thumbs up. No, Disconnect this is the other. Chat. It should be... You should have more and more can, more possibility as well. Well, yeah, just use oh, thumb participants. up. Participants. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah, participants. Yes, okay. Then I just ah. click on you. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Good. No opinion by Maike? Uh, I'm, so I'm in with two accounts and I only voted once to make it fair. <laughs> oh, how clever. <laughs> two accounts? Yeah, I have one where I'm just hosting this entire thing and then I have uh, one to check <laughs> ah, yeah. what we are streaming and everything. I only recognize the host, Maike. Uh, okay, so this is uh, quite a clear view, huh? So we are in favor of um, dealing with the different objectives by by splitting up into a junior part or into um, a below 25 years of age part and um, an advanced part. Okay, so just for the record, it was 11 votes in favor so that it's on the video recording too. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Yeah, so at least that's so, some progress, so that's good. Okay, so concerning the time, we should now move to the conclusion, please. 
and uh, yeah. every, everything that can be discussed around it and I think there's still a lot that can be discussed. Please then use Discord for it afterwards. Yeah, okay, so um, I think we pretty much uh, finished a lot of this um, um, information. Um, I will export this um, my robot in about one hour. So if you have some additional comments to make, your adjustments uh, to make, uh, you may still do so. And then we will um, put this on the on the web page. Huh? Um, so you, uh, was it my echo or somebody else? Okay. Uh, so that was then it would, Jackie, and I muted him now, so you can talk. Okay. Um, so uh, it will be available for reference. Uh, what we should come as is, uh, up with uh, as a final. Um, issue um, today is um, how to proceed. Um, so are there any proposals um, how to continue with this? No proposals? I um, actually think it would make sense to, as I said before, to make like two separate groups of people. So to find, like maybe to write an email and find people who are interested in discussing this further and then have like separate meetings to, to continue the, the two developments further in the two sub leaks that we've now basically defined. Especially finding, yeah, and especially finding committees that might not overlap or only have like slight overlap with the existing committees because establishing a new league is quite a bit of work. And as Jasper pointed out, it might be difficult if the same amount of people now try to establish two completely new leagues, plus the research demonstration that we have on HL for the first time next year as well. Okay, so is there anybody volunteering except for Jackie and me? Uh, volunteering in what? Um, in um, um, defining uh, a framework for these two competitions within the Humanoid League. I'm ready to do. This I, is, I'm ready to do. I think, but so you just said for both of them. I. Yeah, well, just to, to start the process. Huh? But I think I think what makes sense is to just summarize basically just give a bit more context and what Jackie just wrote a few more sentences on what both of those would be send this to the humanoid SPL or like just RoboCup worldwide and ask who is who is interested in joining and then have like two kickoff events for both of them yeah. separately yeah perfectly right but somebody has to uh, to do this and this would be then the three of us unless anybody else would like to join as, as I thought, I would like to join as well. This is Azeb Babayev. Yeah. I would like to join as well. I would like to join as well. Okay. Uh, Jackie, any complaints? Because I didn't ask you, I just considered you. Uh, Michael, you may have to unmute Jackie. No, he should be able to do this himself. <laughs> so I that's funny, yeah. Huh? I propose Jackie and you mute him and then, okay. I, can, um, I so asked we... him to unmute now, but he still has to accept this. I can't unmute his microphone for him. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I, I think because he already was involved in this, so I assume he, he will be fine. Uh, so it would be then uh, Jackie, Asa, Mike and Ludovic and, and me. Uh, um, Raimon, Raimondo just wrote in the chat uh, for uh, a junior uh, specialist. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and you can chip me in too. Jessica, too. Okay, so um, probably we don't have to ask for anybody else. So we should be capable of, of doing no, this. No, no, right I away. think there was uh, Irene and. Uh, some of the other uh, junior people, it was very good to have them. But, okay, but um, my and, and, again, my understanding is that the only thing we are doing now is just writing an email and organizing that the two groups meet. I don't think we need to be 10 
for doing yeah. this. I think we should keep our uh, okay, power okay. then for doing the, for doing this in the individual <laughs> groups. Yeah, because it okay. might be that, for example, if we accept this separation, which was quite clear, uh, then it might not be meaningful to, uh, or it might not be interesting for people who are mostly involved in the junior to work on the rules for uh, Boston Dynamics or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So, sure. um, so we can keep the people who said, yes, here we don't have to involve anyone who's not here now. So we just keep those yeah. people just to coordinate on what we, what we send further and then just kicking off the individual groups. And then in the individual groups, you can have other people who are not here right now who take the lead them on the individual sub leaks. Yeah, so we need to um, put together the context, um, uh, send an email, uh, collect the um, kind of founding committee for these two competitions and then off we go. Can we agree on that? Yeah, oh, correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so are there any final words from anybody else? Um, so I would like to thank um, all the participants um, uh, for joining this. I think it was a very uh, valuable discussion and thank you for all the contributions. Um, I think they will be very helpful for what's uh, going to come.